Hey folks, uh, we got an upcoming test coming up. So um, this is our review for modules 5, 6, and 7. I think I said in the practice test 4, 5, and 6, but it's 5, 6, 7. Okay, so let's go ahead and get started. Find the x and y intercepts of each linear equation. Okay, so the x-intercept is when uh, y is 0, and the y-intercept is when x equals 0. So just substitute in x equals 0 on this guy and solve for y and substitute in y equals 0 and solve for x. So let's go ahead and do that uh, for uh, number 1 right here. Okay, so so the x-intercept again is when y equals 0. So if we just let um, uh, y be 0 and then this 4y goes away or this 4 times 0 goes away and 5 goes into uh, uh, 20 uh, how many times? And over here. Hi, good morning. And when uh, x equals 0, uh, 4y goes into 20, how many times? And it's negative 4, so be careful. Okay, so we get uh, the x-intercept is at 4, 0, and the y-intercept is at 0, negative 5. Let's try number 2. Same thing. Let x be 0 for the um, y-intercept, and let y be 0 for the x-intercept. And then just solve for the other variable. Okay, so this guy over here, to get x by itself, I, I added 2 thirds x to both sides, and then I'll, um, now let's go ahead and do that, it cancels that out, and then let's multiply both sides by 3. If we do that, it'll get rid of that denominator right there, and then divide by 2, so the x-intercept is 6, 0. Okay, the y-intercept is pretty easy. It's just that 4 right there, okay? So when it's in um, when it's in slope-intercept form, this is always the y-intercept right there, okay? All right, so write the equation that describes each graph, okay? So this equation right here, okay, um, where it goes through the y-axis is our, our y-intercept. So that's your b, and y equals mx plus b. It's going to be y equals mx plus 1 right there. And then to get the slope, it's rise over run. So the rise is um, negative 2. Now I could have picked this point up here um, and then went over that one. We just have to reduce the fraction a little bit more. So negative 2 over 2, which gets me uh, negative 1. So that's the slope. So it's uh, y equals negative 1x plus 1, or just y equals negative x plus 1. All right, this is a horizontal line. If it's a horizontal line, it's always y equals a number, okay? So the slope is 0, so here it's y equals 3, your y-coordinates of your points right there, y equals 3. All right, so slopes of a line. If it's given a picture, we just do that rise over run like we just did. If it's in slope-intercept form, then the number that's in front of your x is your slope, and the, if it's in um, uh, point-slope form, then the m that's in front of your parentheses, x minus x sub 1, is also your slope. Standard form, ax plus by equals c, then it's opposite a over b. And if it goes through a couple of points, then you use your slope formula. Just be consistent. Uh, which one you want to put on, you always make sure your y's are on top. And if you do the second y minus the first y, then you have to do the second x minus the first x. You could do the first y minus the second y, but you have to be consistent and do the first x minus the second x. And look, the x, this is what I tell my kids, the x has two legs to it. It would hold up the fraction better. The y only has one leg. It wouldn't hold up the fraction, so the x goes on the bottom bottom to hold up the fractions better. Okay, horizontal lines have slope zero, vertical lines are no slope. Okay, so find the slope of each line. Okay, here we're given a picture, so it's rise over run. So four over six reduces to two over three. Okay, all right, and then so if it goes through two points, we're going to use the slope formula. So here we go. So second y minus first y over second x minus first x. So there we go. And then just watch the negatives, you guys. We get 4 over negative 6, and we never leave the negative in the denominator, so I get a negative 2 thirds. Okay? If it has uh, an equation um, like this, it's in standard form, so it's opposite the number in front of x over the number in front of y. So here it's going to be opposite that negative 2 over 7, which is a positive 2 sevenths. All right, so the graph shows the daily sales goals of a coffee shop. Okay, so if someone sells 30 cups of coffee, how many cups of tea must they sell to meet their goals? So cups of coffee is down here. So 30 cups of coffee goes straight up to the line, and then we're going to go straight over to see how many uh, cups of tea. So go straight up, straight over. So I don't know, about 13 cups of tea, I would think. Okay, 12 I'd probably take, 13, okay. Bob has a prepaid phone card that charges $3 to connect. 
and 50 cents per minute. I tell my students, if you see the word per, that's your slope. So 0.5 is, is, uh, is our slope. You also can use a satellite phone that charges $6 to connect and $0.25, or 25 cents per minute. So after how many minutes will they be the same? Okay, this is a uh, module 7 too, you guys. So the prepaid card is um, uh, $3 to connect and $0.50 cents a minute. And then the satellite card is going to be, and this is uh, the cost per minute. That's why it's C of M. It's a function. The cost per minute is um, $0.25 cents a minute with the $6 charge. And when are they going to be the same? Okay, we had a textbook that made us build a table, and then I showed a shortcut. We just set these two equations equal to each other. And so when they cost uh, the same, uh, we just set them equal to each other and solve for M. So I'm going to subtract 0.25M on both sides. Okay, so I get 0.25M plus that 3 equals 6. Now we're going to subtract 3 on both sides. All right, and I asked my students uh, the other day, I said, how many quarters make a dollar? And they all said 4. And I said, okay, so how many quarters will make $3? And they finally figured out it was 12. So this goes into this 12 times, okay? So when we divide, we get M equals 12. So let's answer the question, you guys. After how many minutes will they be the same price? After 12 minutes, and they're going to be 9 bucks a piece. So you can just plug in 12 right here. 0. 0.5 times 12 is 6. 6 plus 3 is 9, okay? I'd get 9 on this one. 0. 0.25 times 12 is is uh, a fourth of 12 is 3, so 3 plus 6 is also 9 right there, okay? All right, so let's solve this compound inequality, okay? So here we got to go minus 3, minus 3, and then minus 3 over there, okay? And then we're going to graph it, okay? Now we got to divide everything by this 2. So divide by 2, divide by 2, divide by 2, and when we do that, we get that. Now this is not equal, so we're going to have an open circle on 1, and it's going to be a closed circle on, on positive 5, and we're going to shade in between the two right there. All right? Okay, you guys. It um, uh, looks like I ran out of time on this, but I did do this lesson with my kiddos, so I'm going to just stop right here. Also, you guys, if you go to uh, MrMathBlog.com, and you go down to, it's, here's MrMathBlog.com, and you click Integrated Math 1, it'll take you to the link here, and you'll see this lesson getting uploaded. Where is it? Right, right here. I don't know if you can see that. Um, uh, I don't know if you can see my eraser. So it's going to be right here. We also have a practice test that we've uploaded uh, for our kiddos also to help you guys get ready for your test. All right, you guys, hope that makes sense and, and take care.